Welcome, everyone. We're going to start in a few minutes. But first, we're going to publish a poll. So if you have a few seconds to fill that out, we'd be grateful. OK, we're going to go ahead and close the poll and get started. Good afternoon and good morning to some of you. And welcome to our webcast, Create a, as a Service Quotes with QuoteWorks and Great America. I'm your moderator today. My name is Lori Berry, and I'm the Director of Strategic Technology for Great America. And I work closely with QuoteWorks to help bring you these integrations. So a quick run through the agenda. I'll be introducing the presenters in a moment. And they will be talking about how revenue isn't all created equally and how as a service adds recurring value into your business. We'll go through a few best practices you should really think about when creating quotes wrap up with a demo of the new bundling features on the QuoteWorks platform, and we have saved room for Q&A at the end. For the Q&A, please type your questions into the question box at any time throughout the webcast. Um, the answer to the number one question that we get is, yes, we are recording this webcast, and we'll be sending it out following the meeting. So our presenters today are Brandon Grant, who is the Marketing Director with QuoteWorks, and he will be showing QuoteWorks Live towards the end of the call. Thank you, Brandon, for being with us today. And I'm also very excited to introduce Dave Eisenberg, who is our channel training coordinator at Great America. And I believe Dave is going to start by showing us your poll results. So Dave? Thanks, Lori. To the poll question, if you, have, if you haven't adopted as a service as a business model, what is holding you back? 64% answered. I've already adopted as a service. 23% uh, cited other, and 9% uh, cited can't get sales team to, to sell it. 5% um, is coming out for both cash flow concerns and risk concerns. During our discussion today, we're going to address all of those things, including other, uh, <laughs> oddly enough. But before we talk about that, how do we make it easy for you to deliver your products to your customers? How do we do that and protect your market? the value of your business, and all the things that are important to you. How do we do that so when they get this, your proposal, they don't, don't, they don't the customer just doesn't start beating you up on margin and making you solely compete on price. So through discussion, obviously, with QuoteWorks, it really feels like if we can create an environment where you can leverage all the QuoteWorks capabilities and leverage what we like to call our as a rental type structure, now your sales team is armed with the weapon they need to compete in an ever-changing world and protect the business the way you want to protect it as an owner. Think about how many times they, write, they give the proposal to the customer and they rifle through it to the back page and just looking for the cash price. Once they see the price, they make a face like this. To top it all off, Johnny Ponytail down the street is cutting his margin as low as 5% just to close the sale. Now you and I both know to keep the lights on, he has to make margins. So his business model is the gouges customers over the life of the agreement on service calls. What the customer is not usually focused on is the total cost of ownership. We know the purchase price is just part of the cost to own and maintain the equipment over its useful life. Paul Dippel, the CEO of uh, Service Leadership Group, says the technology budget for your customer is made up of 20% acquisition and 80% running. Now, we want to help your customers at QuoteWorks and Great America acquire that equipment and hopefully finance it. But more importantly, we want to help you get a greater portion of your customer's wallet share and that 80% running, that bigger chunk of the pie. Now, we all know that recurring revenue is a hot topic. And I want to show, share with you an article I read the other day. Uh, I read an article about a business owner of a technology company. The business was going great with $16 million in revenue. It was all going according to plan. Then the owner went through a divorce. He was distracted, to say the least. Cost ballooned. Margin shrank. Over the next two years, he lost $500,000 each year. To make matters worse, his bank pulled his finances at the time he needed it the most. After assessing the situation and plotting his next move, he decided his best option was to sell. But who would buy a business that's losing money? The losses meant that on a multiple of EBITDA, the business was worthless. The business sold for $10 million. The reason being is that of $16 million in revenue, 
10 million of it was on recurring service contracts. The buyer, when valuing the business, was not looking at EBITDA multiples. Instead, they were willing to pay one times the recurring service contract revenue. Buyers acquire companies with recurring service contracts because they represent ongoing recurring revenue. They know that service contracts are a pain to renegotiate, and most companies take an if-it-ain't-broke approach to managing their outsourced technology provider. This serves as a good example that not all revenue is created equal when it comes to the value of business. The buyer in this case placed no value on the seller's $6 million in one-off sale revenue. They were concerned with two words recurring and repeatable. The increasing importance of the recurring revenue model reflects a shift in buying preferences for both businesses and consumers. For them, renting assets may be easier and less expensive than buying them. For providers, recurring revenue is attractive because it establishes regular, predictable income. Done well, it can increase revenue, decrease costs, stabilize cash flow, and ultimately enhance profitability. When you sell a bundled payment solution through QuoteWorks and Great America, those payments will drive an increase in recurring revenue, all the while making it stupid easy by removing you from the administrative burden. You know, when Johnny, Johnny Ponytail down the street is gouging with the life of a system on $1,500 $1, this month, $800 bucks three months later, this, that, and the other, it's hard for the customer to have a predictable technology budget. And that's one of the things that they desire most. And as a bundled rental, bundled rental or as a rental type stu structure, it's designed to cover all the commonalities associated with owning and maintaining that equipment with state-of-the-art technology and your service delivery. So how are we responding to everything as a service and that model and all that entails in the market space? We're responding with everything as a rental. Hardware as a rental, unified communications as a rental, it has all the, the, the benefits of everything as a service, of the hardware as a service, UCAS, but except Great America bears the risk. Except you are cash flow positive from day one, and except that Great America bears the burden of administrator. You know, if you think about core competencies of your company, I know that Great America's core competency is billing and collecting, invoicing and getting the money in the door. Last month, we billed $18.1 million in our partner's service revenue, their service delivery, maintenance pass through dollars, spread out over almost 74,000 contracts. But to me, the most impressive number is that we kept zero dollars of that. We want to help you get a greater portion of your customer's wallet share, that 80% of running the network, and we want to be a caveat, as well with the new feature from CourtWorks that allows you to bundle that into a lease payment in a, in a vehicle to do that. But you really need to ask yourself when presenting the customer, and the customer, you have to pose the question, do you really want to own a depreciating asset like technology, or just have use of it and the service and support to maintain it? Now let's talk about how you can protect your equipment margins by selling it as a rental type structure. But first, let's look at it from your customer's perspective. Traditionally, they want to get three to five bids, by the time they go through that whole process, they get confused on which features and functions go with which solution, and price becomes the only differentiation. The race to the bottom ensues, and whoever slashes their margin the most closes the deal, but you and I both know they probably didn't win it. Now, I recently bought a new SUV, me and my wife did. Uh, you know, a lot has changed in our lives since we had our, our son, and he's two and a half now, and so we really uh, needed to upgrade and, and get into a new vehicle. And what I noticed when shopping for these vehicles, whenever I saw a list price, a cash price of $50,000, my knee-jerk reaction, the first thing that pops in my head is, can I get that for $45,000? Can I get them down to forty two? dollars Boy, that'd be nice. But I also noticed whenever I saw just a monthly payment, the first thing that popped in my head, my knee-jerk reaction, is can I swing that on a monthly basis? Can I afford that? The dynamic of my thought process changed significantly from beating you up on margin to whether I can afford it. When you show a monthly payment to the customer, you lighten the weight of the transaction because that cash price, they feel the full weight of that transaction when they look at it. And this, by quoting a monthly payment, 
you may, you know, it, it's just like a college when you're looking at your economics professor and you said, when you finance something, it's a fulcrum that allows you to list something that you otherwise couldn't. That's what happens when you quote a monthly payment. Now let's revisit this. You give your customer the proposal, they rifle through it all the way back, and they see the cash price, and you're $10,000 over what they thought you should be or, or what, they, what, what their impression was. Now you've shown line item pricing. Their next move is to go through this, and they, they arrive at line two, their servers, and they think to themselves, you know what? Let's pull these servers out. I can limp along another year, year and a half on the servers that we have now, and, and now the price is where I think it should be. Well, two things happen when that takes place. First, your sale goes down $10,469 and some change. But more importantly, they just ripped out a, a strong or the backbone of your solution. Is it going to do now what you've been promising the entire time? Because I'm pretty sure, regardless of them pulling those servers out, they're going to expect it to do exactly what you said it would do beforehand. And so what we recommend at Great America is remove the line item pricing. Don't allow them to rip your solution and pick and choose what goes on in that regard. Another great tip is replace the part numbers and technical descriptions. When you show them the part numbers, you make it easy for them to price shop you. To cut and paste and go out to Google or CDW and, and kind of compare it, and all of a sudden you're having to restate your value and you're shuffling instead of, uh, of in a power position in that regard. We also recommend removing the technical descriptions. Most of the time you're not going to be working directly with an IT manager. You're going to be working with the owner of the company who wears a lot of hats. This is a great time. Instead of giving them a, a bunch of jargon, customize this to state the business impact. Reinforce your return on investment and strengthen your perceived value. Because we all know that before your customer makes a decision to buy, that perceived value has got to be greater than cost. Now, alluding to lightening the weight of the transaction, we always, always recommend including a monthly payment because we want to give them that fulcrum. Financing that monthly payment is a fulcrum that allow them to lift something that they otherwise couldn't. And, and including a monthly payment option is key to that. So in this scenario, 48 monthly payments are 848 bucks. Now, also, customize your message. Quotework gives you a lot of leeway, and we'll show you later how to do this, and it's taken out and simplifying it. Instead of having all those options, those features, take them down that narrow path that you want them to go. Don't make them make decisions at every point and every turn. Now we all know the importance of recurring revenue, and this is the main feature that we're, we're the reason we're talking to you today is because we now QuiltWorks allows you to bundle in that maintenance, your service delivery, and build that recurring revenue in when you're quoting a monthly payment and a lease payment RA. So what we recommend is removing the cash price. In this scenario, you're asking for two thousand dollars in recurring revenue, and they have an upfront cost of thirty-seven thousand dollars. That's a, basically an entry fee. So we use financing to eliminate the entry fee. And instead of asking for those two sales, the $2,000 a month and the $37,000 up front, what we do is we combine the two, make it 48 payments of $2,800. And now, Mr. Customer, you have a nice, neat, single monthly payment. And the, and the sales rep only has one sale to make, taking them down the narrow path that you want to. Now, it's very important in technology to be able to refresh that, especially when you tie it to your service delivery. You want state-of-art technology, that technology stack up to snuff where you eliminate a lot of level one issues and all that, those things, where you can constantly keep your customer uh, up, to, up to date. Because here's the facts, guys. First off, technology rapidly depreciates. We're not talking about land or real estate. We're talking about technology. It needs to be replaced especially when you have that, as I alluded to just a second ago, that service delivery tied to it, it's a lot easier to service people who have, have, custom, have equipment that is up to snuff, state of the art, and ready to go. And one of the other things is a repeatable model of this of the, as a service or as a rental is that if they made 48 payments already at 2800 bucks a month, we've established 48 times that they can afford to make that payment. They're comfortable making that $2,800 payment. So we can replace that equipment, go another 48 months, and keep them right where they want it to be. And if you, you refresh their technology, you make it not about one sale, you make it a partnership with multiple sales. 
because up-to-date equipment plus your service delivery drastically improves the customer experience. Now, I know this analogy is not apples to apples, but if you think about your smartphone, how that works. Now, mine, I, I pay 24 month, bucks a month, or 20, I, I have a 24-month contract at $90 a month. It includes talk, text, data, everything, including the device. At the end of that 24 months, I own the phone. But guess what? That goes in the junk drawer next to the spare keys and extra cookies, and I sign a new 24-month agreement right around $90 a month, and I get the latest and greatest iPhone 7, iPhone 8, or whatever it is at that time. That ability to refresh, I run my whole life, my personal and professional off that phone, and I want that up to date, just like your customers are running their communication and their network off your equipment. They need every competitive advantage they have, and they want to be able to refresh it and stay up to date so they can maintain that competitive advantage. But this repeatable model is a gift that keeps on giving. For me, in that scenario with my phone, I always have the latest and greatest. Every two years, I get it refreshed. Same with your customers. They have the latest and greatest. They get it refreshed. It works. They don't have to worry about it. And you get a sale every two uh, three to five years and tie in that recurring revenue with it. When you sell an as a rental type structure, a bundle payment, you are able to put your customers on contract build monthly recurring revenue in the form of your service delivery, and you're able to protect your equipment margins on a repeatable portfolio or repeatable model. Now it's time for another poll question. So we'll give you about 30 more seconds to answer the poll question. And it looks like 65% of, of respondents always show a cash price where 23% sometimes in a certain situation. 12% never show a cash price. Now Brandon's going to talk about uh, the how and, and uh, the demo, the, the QuoteWorks uh, ability to bundle the payment. All right, thanks Dave. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and walk through um, a lot of the points that Dave talked about today and how you can actually do that in QuoteWorks. Uh, now for the ones here that already have QuoteWorks, a lot of this is going to look very familiar. Uh, you won't really have to do much. Uh, for those of you that are new to QuoteWorks or don't have QuoteWorks, um, just kind of follow along. You'll kind of pick up on it pretty quickly. It's fairly simple. Um, one thing to note is for the Great America integration that we're going to demonstrate today, you do have to have the real-time module with QuoteWorks. Um, if you don't have that and you want to test that out, just let us know after the webinar today. We'd be happy to provide you with a free trial of that. Um, so I have built just kind of a simple document here so we can get started. Um, you'll see here I have two items that are going to be my one-time purchase. So these are basically the upfront items. And then I have two monthly recurring items, uh, two services on my document that I also need the client to pay for. So with the typical document in QuoteWorks, um, when you're building these out, you're going to have um, your subtotals, your taxes, shipping, your grand totals, and then any recurring charges that you might have. Uh, for simplicity, I just have the both items set to monthly, but this would also help for um, any other type of um, recurring items as well. So what we're going to do is, now that we have our quote built, we want to get ready to send this to the client and actually convert this to a leasing option, so provide those financing options to the client uh, so they can make their decision. So on the Sale Info tab in QuoteWorks, simply going to click on that, and then you'll see there's a little button over here that says Add Lease Payment Options. And when we click on that, that's going to open up our Lease Payment Calculator window. Now this window is where we're going to do those calculations for you. So the great thing about the Great America integration is that you're not having to maintain any um, databases. So if your leasing rate changes, uh, you never have to worry about updating that information. Our integration is actually going to do that and calculate that information for you. You'll see it's actually telling you the amount for the um, lease is going to be $20,000, and six cents, uh, and then there's a monthly recurring amount of $3,000. Um, the rate card for most of you will probably just have the one uh, where you'll have a rate card already set. Uh, some of you may have multiple ones, so we give you the option to select from a different one, but for say, probably 99% of you, you're going to have just the one rate card, and it'll already be set. From here, you're just going to go through and choose the lease option. So what are your term options? How many months? Are they 12, 24, 36, all the way down to 63? Uh, purchase options, dollar lease, uh, fair market value lease, you know, what type is it? And then advanced payment options. 
So you simply need to go through, make your selections, and all you're doing is essentially choosing the variables to calculate the lease from, and then choose get lease payments. So it's very, very easy. Like I said, it's not going to be too many clicks, not having to kind of worry about anything. So you'll see here um, we have a couple different options, and then we simply select which options we want to include in our document. All you need to do, check the boxes next to those lease payment options, and then when you're ready to present these various options to your client, simply click on Add Selected Payment Options to the Quote. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now when I click on that, that's going to give me my three options on my Sale Info tab. I can even pre-select one for the client just by double-clicking on that payment option. So if I want to say, you know what? Um, I'm giving them the three months or the three different options, but I really want them to kind of focus on that 12 month option. You can pre-select it. You'll see here anytime you have it pre-selected, it'll turn it into green. Uh, and that'll actually have it marked on the document for the client as well. So again, just kind of makes things a little easier, almost kind of like making the decision for them or kind of pushing them in that direction. So we have everything on here. We can go ahead and deliver this document to the client. Now one thing that you may notice is that we still have this recurring amount and that's actually not been included in the 12 month lease here or the 24 to 36. So we're actually keeping that separate. I'm doing that on purpose just to show you um, why we added this feature. So if we click on our deliver window here and select our layout and then click on preview, this is going to show us what our document's going to look like. I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit so it makes it a little easier to see here. Uh, what we're actually looking at. Um, but there's a lot of information down here at the bottom. It's kind of uh, busy for the client. So they're actually having to kind of decipher what's going on, what they're purchasing. So they can see here's their solution subtotal, the tax, the grand total, monthly recurring, and then there's these payment options. Except this one's saying that this does not include the monthly recurring payments. So now the client is actually having to make some decisions. Okay, well, what exactly um, am I paying for? What is my total? Am I paying this amount and to the 12 months and the monthly recurring? Is it just this and the monthly recurring? Is it just the monthly recurring? So it's um, a little more complex. Might have to have some conversations kind of explain to, um, to them exactly what's going on. Um, again, this whole purpose of using this type of integration and this feature is to simplify it for the client and say, hey, here's your monthly price. That's all that you have to look at. So in QuoteWorks, what we can do, since we pride ourselves on flexibility and having these types of features, is we can actually hide this pricing information and just bundle everything into this one cost or this um, the payment options that are listed on the document. So I'll show you how we do that. We're going to close out of the preview window here. We're going to go back to our payment options, so on our Sale Info tab, our payment options. So you see we have the three payment options here. Now you see there's two, uh, there's another button that's available. This is the refresh lease payment option. So if you ever need to update a payment option, maybe um, you've changed the quantity, your pricing has changed, your cost has changed from uh, your vendors where you're sourcing the items, this will actually update the prices for you automatically so you don't have to rebuild out um, the calculations. For our case, we actually want to change the lease payment options because we want to include that monthly recurring. Like I said, we want to kind of simplify it for them. So we're going to click on Change Lease Payment Options. This is going to, again, bring up our lease payment calculator. And this time, we want to include that monthly recurring amount in the lease payment. Um, that way, we're going to bundle that total together. We'll go through, select our options, get our lease payments. You can see it's pretty quick. Make our selections. You'll see they're a little larger now since we're including that monthly total. And then we'll default our first one as selected. Click deliver. And then in QuoteWorks, all I'm going to do is just have a different layout that I'm going to use. So you can see I basically use the exact same layout, but I just kind of simplified the look of it. So at the bottom, very, very easy. Client can see, okay, if this is the solution that I'm being quoted. This is what everything includes. And then here are my payment options. I can make 12 payments for $4,900 a month, 24 payments, or 36 payments. And then the 12 payments is already set for them kind of by default. So that's the first option. Um, if you're using uh, just QuoteWorks uh, in general uh, and you're typically going to deliver the documents, this will already be kind of set up. So uh, that just provides you, again, that added flexibility so you can simplify what the client's going to see from you and what is going to be delivered. It makes it a lot easier for them to come to a decision and kind of see how affordable the solution can be for them. Uh, for those of you that are using Quote Valet, uh, your steps really aren't going to change. Uh, you'd still obviously preview the PDF. 
But then when we upload this to Quote Ballet, this is also going to give the payment options on Quote Ballet. So if you're using Quote Ballet uh, or you're thinking about using Quote Ballet, but you want to um, offer these uh, payment option types, you can still do that. And you don't have to worry about the client getting confused or anything like that because these payment options will actually carry over into Quote Ballet as well. So if I preview this document here, we can see what the payment options will look like. So if I scroll down and you can see the payment options come over and they're even set for you if you've set these. Uh, you could even go a step further and hide this on your Quote Ballet document as well. So if you wanted to um, match exactly in the PDF document, you can do that. So again, we like to provide the flexibility um, in QuoteWorks of being able to show or hide whatever you need to the, um, for the client uh, to make the sale and obviously make it easier on the client, make their decision a little easier. Um, that's the nice part about um, using Quote Valley with the leasing integration is the client's actually going to be able to change which selection they want to use and which payment option they want to use. So uh, it's a great feature to have. Um, it's really easy to set up. So I've walked you through um, the leasing integration. It only took it just a couple minutes um, to in, just to use the entire integration. Um, the setup is going to be just as simple. Um, if we go back into QuoteWorks here and we click on our Tools menu and then we go to Options, um, like I said, you'll have to have the real-time module for this integration. So once you have the real-time module, you'll see there is a real-time tab. You'll simply click on the real-time tab, click on real-time setup, and then just go to the leasing tab. And it's just going to be um, Great America will actually provide you with the dealer ID information. Uh, they just provided us with a demo one so that we can use it. Um, that is something that you get from Great America. Um, contact your rep, they should be able to hand, um, handle that for you. And then once you put it in QuoteWorks, you can actually set some defaults on your leasing tab where you can set your provider, which will be defaulted to Great America. And then you can set your terms options, your purchase options, your advanced payment options. Um, Dave also mentioned about customizing that payment um, kind of um, message at the bottom of the document. So I've simplified mine to just basically say, hey, how many months um, of payments? And that's it. So it's going to say, you know, 12 month monthly payments of this amount or 24 monthly payments of this amount. So you can customize that message on your document very easily as well. And it'll remember those default settings as you go through. Uh, so that's one of the great things about this integration and about using this functionality is that it doesn't require um, hardly any setup on your side. Uh, using the feature is very easy. Uh, and you can go from, you know, if you're going to just start using QuoteWorks and you're going to start um, offering finance options to the client, uh, there's a couple minor adjustments that you can make to your layouts. We have some macros that are available that you can drop into your layout to show these financing options so you're not having to do any crazy calculations or anything like that. And then QuoteWorks will actually take care of the math for you and calculate all that information for you. So uh, if you have any questions about this, um, you know, stick around uh, when we get through the webinar here. We'll, we'll be happy to answer those for you. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pass it on back to Dave so he can um, continue. All right, thanks so much, Brandon, and thanks, Dave. Now it's time for gearing up for our questions and answers. So if you have any questions, please type those in the question box, and we'll answer them in a minute. But first, we want to let you know the next steps that you can take. So as I said in the beginning, we will be sending out the recording after the webcast, so watch for that in your inbox. If you have questions on the setup, please contact Brandon or I. We've listed our email there, or you can always call. Um, if you're interested in how to get started in the as-a-service model, or if you want to enhance your own as-a-service model, please register for the HAR Fast Start webcast. It's next week, and we'll show details on that. And last but not least, please come and meet us face-to-face -face at either IT Nation or HTG. If you're there, we'd love to see you and shake your hand. So, here are the details on the HAR Fast Start webcast this next Wednesday, and you can register for that on the Great America web website, backslash HAR, dash fast, dash start. So let's take a couple questions here. Um, the first one is from Todd, and it is, how, um, or does the VAR own the equipment? Or is it Great America's equipment when it is hot? Well, when it's a hardware as a rental, Great America actually owns the equipment. But uh, that the big benefit of that is that you don't have any burden. You have no risk in the, in the ownership or repayment. Once you're uh, once we buy it from you, all the only risk that you have 
associated with it, the company goes out of business and quit, makes, quit making payments, then you no longer get your uh, service delivery. But you don't have to perform that delivery and you can move on as well. So the risk is extremely limited uh, to that and basically has no risk in that situation at all. Great. Thanks, Dave. Um, Brandon, this question is for you. And it's, um, could we share the templates for the leasing and cash price in QuoteWorks? Yeah, the, there's actually um, on the CoreWorks website, there's a layout for the uh, leasing integration that you can download for free. Uh, if you're interested in the um, one that I demonstrated today, um, that's something that we can share as well. Just shoot us an email um, with that request and we'll uh, send it out to you. Perfect. Okay, and Dave, is there anything that can be done related to co-terms? Absolutely. As long as we have a co-term rate card in our system uh, set up for you, and that's a pretty quick fix. Uh, we can definitely do co-terms, and uh, you can do add-ons or, or special situations as long as uh, uh, we have that set up, which uh, we'll just reach out to your Great American Sales Rep and uh, get that taken care of, and that's, a, that's probably a 30-minute or less uh, issue, and then uh, you're off and running. Thanks, Dave. Brandon has also shared with me a way to put a payment in that may be out of the norm so that doesn't come from a rate card as a custom text field at the bottom of your template. So you could also reach out to QuoteWorks if you ever need to put a payment on the bottom of your quote that doesn't come from one of our rate cards. Um, let's see. This one is from EJ, and it says, need to set this up. Can someone follow up what is needed on my end? Yes. So absolutely, EJ will follow up with that. And this one um, is from Eric. If you have a multi-site proposal and you want to show subtotals per site, how could you do that within QuoteWorks? Brandon, do you want to take that one? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, with, with anything on the QuoteWorks document items tab, um, you have the ability to run subtotals uh, using uh, in different sections. Uh, it's actually really easy. Um, just essentially right-click on the document items um, tab, um, click Add Subtotal, and that'll subtotal up essentially all the items, um, either till it gets to the top of the document or another subtotal. Um, on my example that we showed, um, I actually had them broken out by using heading lines uh, for the different sections. Um, so you can actually run subtotals under your different sections, um, kind of uh, organized with the heading lines. And that's pretty typical. Um, the layout uh, that is available on the website and the one that I use today uh, already accounts for headings and subtotals, so it'll print correctly on the document if that's something you want to do. It also work on the um, Quote Valley page as well. Perfect, thanks. Um, and then a couple more questions from Todd. Are these all FMV leases or dollar buyout? Great question, Todd. Uh, you know, what we recommend is to put it on a rental agreement. Now, rental, the underlying rate associated with the rental agreement can be an FMV or a dollar buyout. Uh, if it's a dollar buyout, at the end of the agreement, the rental will keep billing it, and, but we view you as the owner of the asset, and you can buy it at any time for $1, and then once you own it, you can sell it to them or do whatever you want with it because you own it. Now, the F&V style rental, uh, there's a residual position at the end. We will sell to you for a discounted rate if you wanted to buy it. Most likely, you're in the new equipment business and you want to replace and sell, and the customer can return it uh, or purchase it if... Uh, Actually, on the rental agreement, they don't have an option to buy it, uh, but you do. And so it's just basically your preference and how you want that to go uh, on the rental agreement. But a rental agreement by design has no uh, no purchase option, no transfer of ownership. Okay, one more from Todd. This is for you, Dave. How do customers receive the lease proposal with no detailed pricing? Won't their accounting groups require it to determine how to record it on their books? Well, when you, you don't have the detailed pricing located on there, you're trying to take them down a path, but the 80-20 rule comes into play, and not every sale comes out of a box. So that's a really good point, Todd. And uh, certain situations, you're going to have to pull the curtain back and be, and, uh, be a little more forthright. Uh, but 80% of the time, uh, you know, you take them down a path, you present it as a monthly option, you pay this much a month, all your commonalities are associated because you're backing that state-of-the-art equipment with your service delivery and taking the pain away where they can focus on their business. Uh, you know, some people want to be, you know, drilled down and, 
and meticulous in that regard, and we can have those conversations. And, and that's kind of where Great America thrives, is going, getting on the phone, walking them through it, and answering the questions, and, and getting the, the answers that your customers want so uh, they can make an informed decision. But most of the time, you want to take them down that narrow path and, and show them, you know, focusing on, uh, you know, not, it's not about the steak, it's about the sizzle. We're not selling the equipment, they can get the equipment anywhere. It's, it's about you, and you, you uh, you're the chef, you're the one making it all work, you're holding the manufacturer uh, accountable, you're standing behind the equipment, you're, you're giving your service delivery. And that's the focus of this all-encompassing program, is you pay a thousand bucks a month or whatever the payment is, and it works. Yeah, but I mean, we want to take them down that narrow path, but 20% of the time, or, or whatever that would be, uh, you do have to pull the curtain down out, and like I said, every every cell doesn't come out of a box. Okay, great. I think that is all the questions, and if there are any more, again, feel free to reach out. And thank you very much for attending today. Remember to sign up for the HAR Fast Start webcast next week, and everybody have a great day.